The next one is from Michael. Hi Lars, thanks a lot for your awesome Fusion 360 videos. You're so very welcome, Michael. Uh, I basically learned everything I know about care from you. Haha, <laughs> I'm just happy to help. One suggestion for a future topic, if I may. Yes, you may. I'm currently designing parts for a quadcopter and hence I'm very concerned with everything being as lightweight as possible, yet structurally stiff and tough. Maybe you could make a video about how to do this with things like ribs, honeycombs, and other tricks. Um, I've already watched your videos about simulation. Um, that's great. All right, thank you, Michael. Yes, uh, let's talk a little bit about this. So I think that there's a couple of good things in this, and we'll jump into Fusion. I'll show you um, actually a pretty neat tool about this. So first of all, I don't know that much about flying things and quadcopters, so take anything I'm going to say here with a little bit of a grain of salt. But um, there is some pretty neat tools inside of Fusion for this kind of lightweighting or structural things. Um, now, when it comes to rips and honeycombs, um, there is some different tools you can use. So there is, let's jump into Fusion. That's where we want to be anyways. Um, you know, there is some tools in here uh, that you can use. For example, there's the web tools and things like that uh, you could play around with. And then of course, uh, you could go into uh, the simulation space like you talked about and kind of verifying that whatever you did with um, with these web tools or if you model up like honeycombs and things like that, um, how they're going to stand up. But funny enough, um, there is a channel you should know about, Thomas San Sandlander. Thomas Sandlander. I think maybe Thomas is Swedish. I'm not sure. Um, you guys maybe know already know about Thomas, um, but Thomas just actually released a video one day ago talking about topology optimization, um, and I have done a video on topology optimization a while back. But you should definitely go and check out Thomas's. You should also subscribe to Thomas if you have not already. I love his videos. He gets into uh, to some 3D printing. We're going to talk about that later too. Um, so you should definitely check Thomas's channel out um, and, and check that video out on topology optimization. But talking about quadcopters, let's jump in and, uh, and try to, to talk a little bit about this topology optimization or as it's also called shape optimization because you might find that interesting, Michael. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to model up uh, a quadcopter <laughs> and no, not really, but I'm going <laughs> to because you know me probably. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I hope, I hope I'm going to give you some hints on, on what we could do, um, with something like this, that maybe will give you an idea to get going. So I'm just going to model this up here and, uh, D for dimensions. I'm drawing up some shapes as you already now have seen. Let's make this like 120, maybe quad copter like this. And, um, I am going to go ahead and use a circular sketch pattern so we're going to select this circle here and we're going to spin it around here and we're going to make four of them so now we kind of like have four circles inside of fusion so this is going to be the main body of your quadcopter and this is going to be where i'm assuming you're going to attach your um your rotary blades or whatever those are called <laughs> um and i'm going to go ahead i'm going to extrude this out i'm going to extrude them all to the same thickness i'm going to use um i'm going to go symmetrical so i'm going kind of like both sides and let's just make sure that we uh, we know how thick we're going to make those so we kind of have the body and then we have these four things here now uh, i'm going to connect them all so i'm going to open up a new sketch i'm going to actually also again sketch on the top plane i'm using symmetry here what is something that i always find uh, find good and interesting so i'm just going to Actually, let me do a center rectangle, S, and do a center rectangle. And uh, I'm going to make this, I don't know, 230 long. Uh, oops, no. Wow, I'm in the wrong box here. Let's make it 15 tab and then 230. Um, like that, hit enter, and let's extrude that so we're gonna take that rectangle we're gonna make that also symmetrical <clears throat> and that just means that it's kind of doing it over the middle now this is gonna be a cut 
So I'm just going to go ahead in here and I'm actually going to make it a join. Uh, so it's going to join these three pieces together that it's intersecting like that. And um, since we used a sketch um, to rotate the circles, we could go down and use a solid circle of pattern here. I'm going to change this to features and select that feature here and rotate around this axis. So before, if you go back, um, make that fall and let's just uh, do that there. Uh, so before, when I did the circles, you saw that I used this inside of the sketch, I rotated it. Now we actually did it as a solid. I'm just showing you a couple of different ways to do this. You will see though, when I go over to the bodies folder, that the first um, body did manage to become one solid, but the last two pieces here are sitting out here as their own body. So I'm just going to do a quick combine and uh, just select all of them over here and combine them all into one body. Okay, here we kind of like have our quadcopter type of, of solid. I hope you can follow me this far. If it goes too fast, just rewatch it, slow down. <laughs> Let's go over to simulation space. Now simulation space, we normally utilizing this to, to check that the part is going to withstand what we have modeled up. But as you guys are familiar with, um, we have some different tools inside of Fusion where we can actually utilize simulation tools to uh, generate a shape. One of them is generative design. And I've talked about that on this channel before. Um, that only comes in the paid version. Um, and it also costs some money and, and it can take into different materials and things like that. But what Thomas did the other day and what I wanna make sure that I'm using for this too, because I think Michael can find that useful is if you're going to the simulation space is to use this shape optimization it's doing the same thing as 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 generative design in the sense uh, that we are utilizing loads and constraints to come up with a shape this is just not as advanced as generative design and um, but um it, it's a good starting point especially if you are uh you know a hobbyist or things like that so i'm going to say i'm going to create a new study in the shape optimization workspace and uh, the easiest thing in here is just to kind of like just slow down, um, be aware of that over here. Keep an eye on this little pre-checker here. That will give you kind of a, um, an indication of um, how you're doing um, because there can be a lot of settings. But I'm going to try to send you, send you through this, Michael, and give you some, some hints. First of all, I like to work out of this tree over here a little bit. So if we're looking over here you will see that there's starting material. If we click on the little pencil, it will let us edit this. Now, I don't know what your quadcopter is gonna be made out of, um, but know that you can change different materials in here. So I'm just gonna select a, a aluminum 6061 just to select something different than the default steel. So you know that that um, is happening in here. Now then, so that's kind of like up here. The next thing you gotta do is give it constraints. So right now, this model is kind of like floating out in space. We got to kind of like tie it down. And we're going to do that by adding a constraint. I am going to add a constraint by fixing the backside here. And that means that that would almost be like if we glued this to a pole or something. And then the next tab you will see here is the load. So I'm going to apply a load to it. And I'm actually going to apply a load to this face, this face, this face and this face. Now be aware of that um, shape optimization is, is not utilizing loads in the sense of a static stress analysis. And I'm gonna try to say this without making it too complicated, but pretty much what it means is that whatever load you're putting over here, and right now it's Newton, I actually like to do that into pounds because that makes more sense to me that whatever number you're putting in here is not really gonna change what we're gonna get out of shape optimization. So I'm putting in 350 pounds, um, but it, you could put 500 pounds and it will not change really what we're getting out of it. Um, but so we're pan putting loads here. I hope most people can follow me so far. Now we can go ahead now and you will see that we're actually getting a pre-check um, and we can go in and click solve uh, for this right now. Now, 
I have to admit that I'm 100% sure about this. I'm pretty sure, I'm 99% sure, I should probably check this out, that you will see if you're on a hobbyist license, they will say this is going to cost you zero cloud credits. Because I'm kind of like, I work for Autodesk and I'm on a, on a, on a, a pot, bought license, it's going to cost me five cloud credits. That's equal to $5. Um, $5 is probably not too much. But I'm going to go ahead here and click solve and it's going to ask me to save this so i'm going to save this as michael's file and click save now when i do this it's going to now start solving um this part and it's just going to take uh it's not going to take very long uh, it's just going to send it up in the cloud and it's going to do a quick uh, solve on our part here and while that is happening um i'll leave it on the screen i'm going to take a sip of my coffee because this is just me trying to add some value to your Fusion 360 experience. Um, and uh, and just hopefully you find this kind of stuff uh, useful. So I'm just gonna give it a minute uh, as it's solving here on the cloud. So now I could start a conversation with some of you guys about, uh, so how is everything going? What do you think of, uh, of the Yankees? Um, but I don't really have much to that. While this is solving, I can tell you that next week, um, next week we have the Fusion Academy out in Portland, and I will be there. So hopefully, uh, you are going to uh, to join me out there. I'm actually going to just close this down for a second because I wanted to show you that you can actually see that over here it gives you a uh, a solving in process. So next week, uh, that will be uh, August 6th, I believe. There is the Fusion Academy out in Portland, and I will be out there. There we go. That's all. All right. <laughs> I just had to fill in the space here. Now, we get a result here, and uh, and, uh, and you get kind of like a, a thing you can pull in over here. So if I pull this all the way down to the end, we will kind of see our model, and then you will see as I'm dragging up, that things start to disappear. But this is not, Michael is looking at this right now. Michael's like, this is not really helpful. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. Um, so let me just show you why that is. Um, that is actually, if I go over and I turn on this light bulb that says mesh, you will see that we get a mess appearing right here. And um, without getting too much into detail, this is a very rough mesh. Uh, very big triangles and that is why that when I when I pull this slider up here This looks weird like it doesn't give me a great result But I wanted you to know that so what I'm gonna do is make gonna run the study one more time I'm gonna right click up here, and I'm gonna say clone the study Clone the study gives me study number two So I'm pretty much just took the original study that we just ran and I'm just gonna copy it again now I'm gonna go in and edit the mesh and if I go down, so what I did was, sorry, I went a little fast. I'm going to click on the pencil, and I'm going to switch to absolute size. And I'm going to make this 10 might actually be good right now. I'm going to hit OK for 10, and then I'm going to right-click and say generate a mesh. Uh, so that means that the model is going to be regenerated. And now you will actually see that instead of before we had two rectangles, now we have, um, it's kind of, it's broken up in multiple rectangles. Let me go back to the first study. You can see how big it is here. Let's go down, down to study optimization number two. Now it's like this. You could decide to be more accurate and we could clone that one more time to number three. And we could actually maybe go in and make it half that size. Now knowing that the lighter you're doing the mesh, the longer it's going to take to solve. But it will give you better results, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead here, I still have the green check mark. I'm gonna go ahead here and start solving this study right here with the finer mess. Now again, it's gonna take a little time, a little bit longer to do this because this is, um, this now have a finer mess on it. But I'm trying to let you know as many things as I can without going too much into depth to this. As this is going, I also want you to know that there is something up here called shape optimization. And what you can do in here, we just clone the study one more time. 
clone this study into a study number four, and you can work with that while it's solving up here, um, that you do have some shape optimization tools. What this will let us do is it will actually let us tell the software certain areas where we don't maybe want uh, it to build anything. So you can actually go out here and oops, you can actually go out here and select uh, different regions. So maybe I don't want certain areas where I'm going to mount the propellers to be uh, involved with this. Maybe it's more out here um, on the main body where maybe the engine's going to be for this um, for this thing here, where you could um, you could you could kind of tell an area where you're going to tell it that there's not going to be um, any, don't mess with this, with this area here. And you're kind of like preserving that area. That's the shape optimization out there. So be aware of, you have a lot of different options in here. There is also a lot of different videos out online about this. Um, so I don't want to get, uh, too far into that, but let's just jump back to our, um, third option here. What was the one we just created? And, uh, let's look at this result. Um, so now, Michael, you will see that because we made the mesh uh, clearer, we actually are getting a different result. Um, and, and what you can do here is we can kind of scroll this one up and down. You get an idea about where you maybe could remove material. Um, so if I move this one up here, you will see that clearly where we're going to mount uh, our propellers that we could actually maybe clear some things out there. You'll also see the center, and that's probably going to be cleared out anyways because we're going to have our electronic uh, things. But you will also see that we get some pocketing in here where we maybe could, like you had talked about, putting some honeycombs or some ribs. So this is pretty neat tool to kind of give you this kind of idea about this. And what is really cool about this to wrap this up is that if I go to the result section up here, you can actually promote what we're seeing on the screen. If I click on this promote button and I can go over here and I can say to the model workspace and hit okay. And now I'm back in my workspace and look what I got. I got it out as a mesh. And uh, if you worked in um, watch my videos before, you now know how you could possibly convert this into a solid or you could, of course, also just start sketching, using it as a reference and, and model things away. But Michael, this was a little bit of a long video, but hopefully uh, this was something new that you could find useful for this. So that was super helpful. Thank you so much, Michael. Hope that was good. Hope that gives you new ideas to how to design your quadcopters. Thumbs down if this was stupid. Comments as always, and if you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate if you do that. That just kind of like, you know, that's my fuel. Your comments and subscriptions is kind of what keeps us YouTubers want to keep on doing this on, on our weekends.